us understand density. The density of a substance is defined as its mass per unit volume. The density is denoted by the Greek letter rho. This is your Greek letter. It is written like this and it is called rho. Right? Dens density is denoted by this letter and it is defined as mass per unit volume. If we write this statement in terms of mathematics, this whole statement transforms as something like this. Density is equal to mass over volume. In terms of its symbol, how do you define density? How do you write density? Rho is mass over volume, right? So what is the SI unit for density? As I have told you already, you need not memorize the SI unit for each and every quantity. Some of the SI units you can quickly derive if you know the formula. So for example, the formula for density is very, very simple. It's mass over volume. So what is the SI unit for? For mass, SI unit for mass is kg. The SI unit for volume is meter cube. So what will be the SI unit for density? It is kg per meter as you all see here kg per meter cube or in terms of gram you can also give density as gram per centimeter cube all right so let us now answer one simple question which one of these two objects here have a greater density you see a piece of iron and you see a fluffy piece of cotton both of them are 1 kg. So when we say that both of them are of 1 kg, what does it mean? The mass is 1 kg. The mass is the same. If you do not understand mass, please go to the video of mass and weight. There you'll understand in deep details about what is mass and what is weight. So here if you see, the mass is the same, right? Mass is the same means? Both the object have same amount of matter, same amount of atoms, molecules, or you can say same amount of content in it. The mass is the same. So when you apply the formula for the density, which is mass over volume, for iron and for cotton separately, right? The mass, the numerator is going to be the same. So if you are finding the density for the cotton, the numerator is 1, 1 kg. The numerator here is 1 kg. Over, over the volume. Volume. Over the volume. Let's call Vi as the volume for the iron. Vc as the volume for the cotton. Which one has more? Volume, obviously you see that cotton is fluffy, it has more volume, it has more volume. So volume of the cotton is more than the volume of, volume of iron. What happens as a result? Here the denominator is more. When we talk about the density of the cotton, the denominator is a bigger number. So the density here is the density here is lesser as compared to the density of the iron, which is a bigger number because the denominator here, the volume of the iron is less. The denominator is a smaller number. When you divide by a smaller number, the value of the fraction is a big number. Here, when you divide by a bigger number, the value of the fraction is a smaller number. And we know it from a day-to-day -day experience also that cotton has a lesser density. Why? Because its particles are far apart. They are far away from each other. When the particles, molecules, matter, particles are far apart from each other, we say that the density is less. Right? Volume more, mass less, density less. In case of iron, if you look at the matter here inside, atoms, molecules, they're compact. 1 kg is compact. The atoms are close together, very less space in between. It is very dense. Right? Right? So whenever you have a fluffy item where the volume is 
white lot. The, the, the forming atoms are away from each other, therefore the density is less. And you can prove everything, all your understanding by looking at this formula, where the volume comes in the denominator, mass comes in the numerator, which helps us understand many things about density. Let us answer this question. A wooden post has a volume given to you and a mass given to you. So you are given, you are given the volume. This is your volume. You are given the mass. Calculate the density. It is a simple application of the formula, mass over density. You get the density and the unit comes from kg here and volume meter cube. Simple. Let us move on with the chapter. Now let us understand some of the methods of finding the densities of some object. We are going to consider three cases. We are going to consider three cases. This is your case number one out of three cases, right? It is easy to find the density when your solid object is a regular shape. Solid object is a regular shape means means for example this cuboid that you see here. Cuboid is a regular regular shape. Why? Because we know the formula for finding the volume of a cuboid. Right? Similarly the cylinder we know the formula from our maths. The formula for finding the volume of a cylinder. Similarly cube your sphere, your cone, they are called regular shapes. Why? Because you know the formula for their volumes. So finding their density is easy and straightforward. What do you do if you have to find the density of such regular shaped object? Let us go to the steps. Step one. Step one, measure the mass using a regular or an electronic balance. If it is a mass, you have to measure its mass by using what device? A balance. A balance gives you the mass. Right? Please go to the chapter on mass if you do not understand what is the device which is used for finding the mass. So you use a regular balance or an electronic digital balance which would be more precise and easy to use. Right? Find the mass. Mass is done. Numerator for the density is done. Next, find the volume using the standard formula because these are regular shapes. Use the volume using the standard formula. Mass is done. Volume is done. Numerator is done. Denominator is done. Use the density formula. Mass over volume. Simple. Right. Let us come to case 2. How do you measure the density of a liquid? So if you have to measure the density of the liquid, how do you measure its density? Again, this is simple. The two things that you need to know are the mass and the volume of the liquid. What is the device which is used for measuring the volume of the liquid? The device which is used is the measuring cylinder. A measuring cylinder looks like this. The level of the liquid here, the reading at the top gives you the volume of the liquid, right? Measuring cylinder is used for measuring the volume of any liquid. So use a measuring cylinder to find the volume of the liquid. Step 1 done. Volume is done. Step 2, find the mass. How do you find the mass now? It is a liquid. It will flow away if you keep it on the balance. So how do you find the mass? It is slightly a more tricky process but easy to understand. So what do you do? It's a two-step process. First, you measure the mass of the empty beaker. Let us say that it is M1. Then you pour the same liquid, the same liquid in the beaker. Then you calculate the mass of the beaker with the liquid. Let us say that this is M2. Then the mass of the liquid is simple. M2 minus M1. Very, very simple. Now you know the mass. You know the volume, use the density formula, you'll get your density. 
simple. So finding the density of the liquid is also a simple process. How about, how do you find the density when the object is an irregular solid? Irregular solid means, say you can pick up any object from your surroundings, say you pick up a piece of stone, you pick up a piece of any object, any decoration pieces from your living room, how do you find its volume? Finding the volume for an irregular shape object is tough because we do not know the formula for finding its volume. And volume is something we need to know if we find, need to find the density. So what do you need to do? Finding the mass is easy. Let's find the mass first. Calculate the mass using a balance. Mass is done. Measure the volume using a measuring cylinder or displacement. So you measure the volume using the displacement method. What is a displacement method? For that, you take a displacement can. This particular can that I am showing here on the screen, it's called a displacement can. Fill it up with liquid, with some water. Water is the most common liquid around us. Fill it with water till it's sparked. This thing which is coming out like a teacup, Right? You pour the tea from the spout. Similarly, here also you have a spout. Fill the water all the way till the spout. Now you pour, now you tip the irregular shaped object in the displacement can. You can tie the object with a piece of thread. Then you immerse it in the displacement can. Water will flow out from the spout. The amount of water which is displaced is same as the volume of this irregular object. Now what do you do? You take this water, pour it in a measuring cylinder. Take this water from the beaker, pour it in the measuring cylinder. The reading on the measuring cylinder will give you the volume of the liquid here, which is same as the volume of this object. And you get the volume of this object. Volume of this object is found using a displacement can and a measuring cylinder. A measuring cylinder will give you the volume of this liquid which has been displaced. You know the mass, you know the volume, use the density formula. Density is mass over volume and you'll get your density. Density of irregular shaped object. Simple and easy. Science is simple and easy. Believe me. So now we have a sample example here. You may pause the video for a moment, solve this question, come back and play the video again. Alright, so if you have done this question, tell your answer. Let us understand the question first. A measuring cylinder contains a volume 120 cc centimeter cube of certain the liquid is then poured into an empty beaker of mass given to you 51 grams. That's the mass of the beaker. The total mass of the beaker and the liquid was then found to be 145 grams. Calculate the mass of the liquid in grams. So that's easy. 145 gram is the mass of the beaker plus the liquid. And 50 gram is the mass of the empty beaker. So how do you find the mass? You have to subtract these two numbers, right? How do you find the density in the next question then? B part, you know the mass, you know the volume. Use the density formula, please tell your answers. It's an easy question. All right, so I believe that you all would have got correct answer here. It's a simple question. Questions on density are always relatively easy. Now that we have understood the three cases of finding the density, you'll be very confident in solving questions on density. Thank you so much for watching this video.